This should be the place. Oso stepped up, but grimaced at the pumping and bumping of the music within. Lexi chewed her lower lip. Looking back at the camp, this had been the first time since ever that Kroos had been ever willingly choosing not to go where she was going. It probably is. Let's just get in and finish this. I'm not too enthused about Kroos's instructions. Lexi was visibly worried, as was Oso and the still present Fobwatch. Fobwatch had been told he could leave at any time, with the previous warnings, but he seemed extremely enthusiastic about finding the Crystal Empire. So, altogether, they started into the old building. The music felt odd, booming loud and strangely pleasing noise. She, of course, recognized it, but despised it. Back before the war ended, the music was rather popular. Popular for clubs and parties, that is. Clubs and parties she never went to for reasons she totally convinced herself that were by her own choices. Rarely was there any vocals or actual instruments. It was all magically and electronically created sounds with music that you felt more than you would hear. The ponies not dancing were completely vegetated on different assortments of chems, so Oso's questions did not get any useful answers. Every pony they talked to just wanted help trying to figure out if it was possible to be freaked in as it was to be freaked out, or if knees could talk, what would they say? One did bring up the inevitable destruction of the universe through the war between the god of snuggles and the god of cuddles for the throne of canoodles. Needless to say, Kroos's tip was not paying off just yet. Well, this is a complete waste of time. How are we going to find this guide? Lexi just mumbled and scrunched her nose at the music. Oso seemed completely unaffected. Fobwatch, however, appeared to bob slowly with the beat, but stopped rigidly and turned the other direction when Lexicon gave him a quizzical glare. She figured it was possibly a guilty pleasure of his. Music didn't seem so bad as the odd urge to see him embrace it and possibly dance took root in her mind. Whatever, Lexi thought within. Who came up with it had to hide quickly as the other Lexis glared. Honestly, Lexi would say that she didn't like the music, but rather it was making up for something to try to prove to her that she disliked it. Honestly, Lexi was promptly bobbing on the head and thrown out in time out closet. All at once, things changed. A tone turned on and almost everybody who could stand upright those of who could, left in a hurry. Even those that were close to wasted on chems ran leaving just a few asleep, or oddly interesting ponies aside from Lexi and her friends. The music was extra bouncy and flamboyant, the sort that usually gets the crowds on the tips of their hooves ready to start bouncing to the beat. Suddenly, the music climaxed, and from the curtain on stage, bobbed and weaved a cherry-red pegasus. Her mane whipped about in dazzling show of flair. Lexi's eyes went wide as she corrected her brain after seeing what little clothes the Pegasi wore. Betrayed a sex. His mane whipped out. Luscious golden blonde with an electric blue stripe. And then the words burned into the music as he danced. Perhaps a little too enthusiastic to the beat. The music continued as the sleek stallion on stage whipped about in surprisingly acrobatic displays on the stripper poles on the stage. The Mexican couldn't help but just stare, her eyes tracing the excessive gyrations of the cherry-colored hips. Though Fobwatch let out an uncomfortable sigh, as Oso groaned, Lexi, I think we found our guide. Oso spoke through his talons, which he buried his face in. Lexicon let out a soft, huh? Oso looked into her eyes and grumbled. 
Remember what Kroos said about the name of our guide was Flaming Reaper? As if he spotted it for a moment, Fobwatch pointed a hoof, and though it looked took a bit with the stallion dancing so thoroughly and grinding so hard on the stripper poles that they all half expected him to start a fire, Lexicon spotted it. His cutie mark was a skull with red flames looking up on top, and blood dripping down below. Oh. No. Was her only response. The beat exploded once more, and the stallion on stage whipped about, and what passed off for a pair of flankless elastic pants shot off the pegasus and flew across the room, hitting Fobwatch in the face. With his reaction, the pants might as well have been a swarm of flesh-eating parasites. Oddly, his crazed, desperate flailing, as he attempted to free himself from the stripper clothes stuck to his face, almost matched the new bassy beat that kicked up as both Fobwatch and the stallion on stage bucked and heaved for very different reasons. Lexicon now fully understood Kroos's reaction and reluctance to go searching for the guide. Apparently, he was quite familiar with his pony's style and decided to spend the least amount of time possible with the flashy stallion. But this was something she figured was a problem for Kroos alone. A thick blush over her face, Lexi got more than an eyeful of what started as dancing and quickly turned into very adult display. Twirling and spinning like a top on stage had any group asked him a question. They were confident it would go unheard. Instead, they collectively made their way to the only pony not strung out or cheering at a stage. A dull green earth pony stallion with a scruffy black mane and grayish purple eyes. It was as if uh, he felt at the tap before Oso could manage the task. The pony turned around and looked up at the big griffin. His smile, almost purring, the hat topping his head, read with a single word across it like he was a billboard. The word was rather simple. Gay. You need something, birdie? He smirked, and also did his best to politely shake his head. Leveling a talon at the stage, he cleared his throat and kept uncomfortably close so the pony could hear him over the baming boots. Is that the Flaming Reaper? The pony laughed. Yes, but there's better choices, Big Birdie. A sudden interruption broke the tension of the two as Oso's relief as the Pegasus on stage, still riding the poles, leaned so far back he came eye to eye with the Earth Pony. Aye, Gaylord, you've been boasting a bit too much. How about you get up here and put your money where your mouth is? He leaned in and stuck his tongue out playfully. Bitch, don't even try me, he grinned back, looking deep into the Pegasus's eyes with a playful rivalry. Oh, and the big bird is here to see you. The Pegasus smiled and narrowed his eyes. Oh my. He seemed to purr as he hopped down from the stage. Does some griff need a pony ride? Oso stepped back, and to Lexi's great surprise, he seized her by the shoulders and put her in front of him. Go ahead, Lexi. You give him the details. I'll secure an exit. And with that, the enormous griffin stepped out, leaving only Lexi and Fobwatch with the pegasus. <laughs> Spoil spot. He sighed and then whipped his hair about before sitting down and looking over at Lexicon. Sorry, not really my type. You, though. He looked over at Fobwatch. What's your name? He coughed nervously, but as if he wanted to prove himself useful to the group, he stepped forward. I'm Fobwatch. Just trying to help the lass. Mm. Fobwatch. He purred playfully. Fobwatch. Fob watch. Fob watch corrected. Honey, I know what I said. Pegasus smiled and kicked back in his seat. 
Well, if you're not here for a pony ride, what do you need from the fabulous Reaper? Lexi cleared her throat. Still a touch red from seeing so much of the flexible and showy stallion, she wet her lips and finally managed to speak. I have a friend who recommended you. He said you know how to get to the Crystal Empire. Reaper's eyes widened. Not many know that story. And it's not an easy trip. Not a cheap one, either. He looked up and to the left as if he was holding the idea in his gaze and playfully juggling it before turning back. You know, it's a wasteland, right? Glow and snow. Only the wraiths are out there. Can you guys even pay? She recalled the library, the resources of the castle. She was 100% positive that the Griffins had more than enough to pay him. I'm certain of it, and it's very important. Even if there's nothing up there, we need to get to it. He laughed. I'm not kidding. It's literally just an empty nothing. A place where you can barely tell that the city once stood there. And still, all kinds of spooky and dangerous. Did I mention dangerous? Yes, I'm sure of that. She still wasn't actually clear on what was what. She didn't want to promise something the Griffins weren't willing to surrender. But if this is what needed to be done, she would strike the deal. If it was too much, the Griffins could would only have their lack of trust in her to blame. We are convinced of the danger. I myself have come pretty damn close to it within the last past weeks. If you can get us there, you're hired. Reaper smiled. All right, Cherry Pone. Lexi? My name's Lexi. She corrected him a little, unsure of why he was calling her that. But he did not seem at all phased by her momentary confidence. Sure, Cherry Pone. He grinned and leaned in close to the Earth Grey Pony. Octave, get my stuff. And don't you go redecorating till you see a damn corpse. Not one damn thing better be out of place when I get back. Even if I come back as a bag of ash. The Earth Pony laughed and made his way out. Reaper, in turn, looked to Lexi. How many are, and are we expecting any troubles? Lexi slumped a little. Well, it's at least me and two griffins. Fobwatch wants to join too. And there might be a very angry third griffin who comes as well. I'll have to ask. Troubles? I'm not sure. As if fate itself was trying to shaft her, there was a tap on her shoulder. She turned to see something she swore was more alien to her than anything else she'd ever seen. It was a mask. An armored mask. It clearly wasn't power armor, but it was fully sealed from ear to ear. This pony was not showing a single hair. Come with us. Lexi blinked, not quite sure what was going on. She couldn't even guess what this was. A prank? A message, or... The shotgun in her face answered it quickly. Now. The voice was hauntingly familiar, but not in any way she knew, but in a way that felt like she should know. Fobwatch stepped forward as if to tug on the newcomer's shoulder and let him know how many guards were present in the corners of the little post-apocalyptic club, but he didn't get a single syllable out before the disturbingly Amazing acrobatics of the armored pony, whirling in the air, ended with a very solid kick to Fobwatch's chest, sending him tearing through the air. The shotgun came to a stop, of course, for Lexi's face again to reiterate the point he was making on the abduction. But a simple red hoof and confident grin kept the weapon from making it full circle. You're starting shit in my house. You don't want to start shit in my house. Especially with my clients. The armored pony glared. He did not uh, 
course, correct the shotgun he wanted in Lexi's face. Move aside. I have no quarrel with you. Bitch, you do now. But I'll let you leave before I work your ass over. The growl coming from the Pegasus was something between seductive and aggressive. Lexi didn't see what happened next as she went tumbling back over Reaper's shoulder and onto the stage as he and the newcomer flew into a blur of melee combat. Lexi barely managed to get to her hooves under her as she uh, overdrove into her armor, uh, flipped on one Reaper took to the air. Seeing him clear out of the way, she entered Seth's. If she could move at normal speed, she would have gawked at the very low percentages of hitting the armored pony. She toggled half a dozen low-caliber shots with a 14% chance to hit center mass. Certainly, not surprising herself, she missed all of them. But, a good surprise, Sats didn't end with her shots. Just as quickly as her shots rattled off, a flurry of broken shards of debris flew from Fobwatch as he telekinetically threw everything he could at the pony. Unlike Lexi, Fobwatch's attacks hit, but did little to nothing against the heavy armor. The locals took cover and started popping off shots, which, just like the previous attack, simply bounced off the armor. But the bouncers ducked low and lowered their weapons when a red streak plowed into the armored foe. Lexi couldn't follow it. She could barely even keep up with what was going on. She just managed to pop off the opposite side of the stage and listen to the thrashing and occasional bashing. She nearly jumped away when Fobwatch faded into existence uh, near her. Breathing hard, he pulled open his jacket and took out a heavily dented steel plate. Stay down. I think that's the guy who came looking for you. Despite the warning, she poked a nose around the corner to see the two engaged in Vicious, scary, acrobatic combat. Locking in close, Reaper leaned in with a grin. You're good. Ah, damn, you must be an animal in the sack. This only earned an angry growl as he redoubled his zeal and pushed against Reaper. Lexi paused for a moment as she swore she heard fighting other than in here, as if there was a scuffle just outside. And her eyes widened with fear as she remembered the armored pony's words. Come with us. Us implied multiple, and if they'd been following the group the whole time, then it would make sense to attack the moment Oso was not present. But they'd need to keep him busy. It all drove panic into her. She always loved a well-thought-out plan. It was the ultimate weapon to her. And the thought of a perfect plan against her scared her a lot more than she wanted to admit. Her heart leapt into her throat as the armored pony finally took Reaper's hooves out from under him and with a touch too much force held him down with a hoof to his throat. Straining an effort, he looked down at the Pegasus and uttered sternly, You can live. Just step aside. Despite the hoof to his throat, Reaper gurgled and waved, gesturing as if he was desperate to say something. The armored pony hesitated as if playing with the idea of just snuffing him out slowly, relented, and let Reaper speak. Harder, Daddy, was all that escaped Reaper's lips. The armored foe almost fell over. There was a simply a pure second of confusion as the figure remained motionless. And it was at this very moment that Reaper broke into a death roll, blasting the foe off of him and coming to a stop in the air. His eyes swept the area and his hoof came out, just in time for an odd object like a red case with Swiss cheese pattern covering, uh, peppered about it, flying out to meet the outstretched hoof. He grinned and messed about with his mane before pulling out a small pen-like object and jabbing it into his shoulder before hissing sharply through clenched teeth. The armored pony locked up and his stance made it clear that he would no longer pursue Lexi for the moment. But that didn't stop Reaper. Stampede. The word was almost gurgled as the Pegasus whipped the red case he had been thrown out like a toy, spinning and whirling in his hooves. 
It was two and a half feet long and quickly unfolded and clicked loudly to a five full five feet. Then another, much more recognizable shape began to form as another piece of it folded out and clicked loudly into place. Ah, this is probably why he's called a reaper, Fob Watch noted from his hiding spot behind Lexi. Reaper hefted the scythe and blasted forward ten times as fast, froth building up at his lips as he swung the weapon, gouging heavy furrows into the impossibly dense armor and sending the pony toppling. Sparks flew when the armor just barely held as Reaper tossed the poor soul about like a toy. Into and even through walls, every pony in the bar was hiding, and it was very clear that they trusted Reaper to take care of this, or more likely they were simply afraid to move while Reaper was doing his thing, with what Lexi was very confident was extremely potent chems. You fucked up my bar! I'll wreck your shit, you little bitch! Reaper's words seemed to uh, rather collected for some pony on extremely high combat stimulants. But whether by design or luck, Reaper's next gulf swing with the scythe both managed to draw blood and send the armored pony through a window. The Reaper glared down at the ponies, who miraculously survived what felt like a clash of titans, just before he tore off through the window after the armored pony. There was an odd, eerie silence as even the fighting outside sounded to stop. Don't worry. He's okay. Why don't you tell me what happened? Lexi looked up at the gray earth pony from before. She was pretty sure she had heard Reaper call him Octave. Fobwatch beside her struggled to stand up rubbing his chest and rummaging about his bags for a potion. The whole bar looked to be slowly piecing itself back together. I'm sure it's not your fault, but I'm gonna need some answers, and very soon. Octave hefted his little sawn-off shotgun as he looked down at Lexi and Fobwatch. There was a touch of worry when Oso came back in, he looked like he was ready to just kill everything. Thankfully, he listened before he acted, and by the time the local pony started cleaning up, Reaper came back. But he said nothing as he stormed angrily past every pony and locked himself in his own room behind the stage. Is... is he going to be okay? Lexi looked over to the Earth Pony Octave. She wanted to do something, anything, but she was in a strange place full of strangers. There was very little she could, uh, would likely be able to do, even if she offered. Octave shook his head with a laugh. He'll be fine. He's top bitch around here. You don't get to his level without being resilient. He's just grumpy they tore into the bar. But this gives me a chance to redecorate. Octave giggled, rubbing his hooves together near fiendishly. I will straight up gnaw off your balls. Both Octave and Lexi turned about to see Reaper glaring down at Octave. I told you, not a damn thing. Oso noticed the red pegasus and scooted up. His stress was clear on his face, but his face portrayed uh, duty more than aggravation. I hear that you agreed to work for us. I do hope you still plan on it. Reaper's expression soured uh, and turned into an almost flirty, condescending look. Oh, big boy, Reaper never quits, no matter what it takes. I finish satisfaction. Guaranteed. He leaned in close, but quickly met Oso's extended talon pressed against his snout. I need a guide, not a blowjob. Oso's frown matched his scolding voice. Reaper's smile uh, his rear, giving a soft, playful wiggle. Can't it be both? Oso groaned, but Lexi saved the day with a question. What is your price, exactly? I mean, I'm confident we can pay it, but you never told us? Bobwatch's ear twitched. He also seemed to want to know. Oh, well, normally it's a 2K job. 
half now, half when we get back. But I'll take off 20% due to the big boys fight outside in my boss' defense. And because my guards seem to have forgotten how to do their jobs. He glared at the various bouncer ponies, either shrugging or stepping back. If you were high as a damned kite, maybe you would have noticed them. Hmm? You listening? Brushes? He glared particularly hard at one guard who seemed to just slink back and sit down out of sight behind the bar. And that's still a lot. A whole lot. Oso grumbled loudly as he looked through his bags. Tell you what. And this place you want to go to is empty, completely dead, literally nothing but radiation and blizzards. Well, and wraiths, but... Reaper smiled, looking over at them. I'm a sucker for adventure, and a sucker for big, strong birds. He purred and rubbed up against Oso, who quickly took a step back, letting Reaper plop onto the ground. But instead of standing back up, he rolled over playfully. If you show me something awesome down that way, I'll waive the return fee. But it's gotta be awesome. Reaper groaned and reached into his pack. Does it have to be caps? Pegasus smiled from his spot on the floor. No, of course not. Weapons, medicine, chems, food, or favors. He purred the last word playfully, sticking out his tongue at Oso. But Oso simply pulled out a small brick of solid gold and dropped it onto the floor in front of him. Reaper blinked and picked it up before hefting it to Octave, and he gave it a soft bite and a close look. It's real. And pure. Very pure. Reaper smiled. <laughs> That's more than enough. Consider me fully and properly hired. I mean, wow. <laughs> okay, then. It's a bit late. Would you like to stay the night? Leave immediately, or perhaps I'll just meet you in the morning? Regardless, I will lead you all to our location and protect your booties in this sweet cinnamon roll. He hugged up Lexi before dropping her near carelessly onto the ground. Oso cleared his throat and gestured to Lexi and Fobwatch. You two head back to camp. Tell Kroos what happened and make sure he's okay. I'll be here to give him the lowdown on what to expect, then meet you out there. He turned back to the Reaper, who batted his eyelashes happily, putting on dreamy, lost-in-each-other eyes look. Lexi and Fobwatch stepped out, but Lexi was 100% certain Oso was glaring untrustingly at Fobwatch as they left. They found Kroos up in a tree, glaring down at them. He seemed to scan the skyline before finally coming down. Did you find him? Bob watched nodded with a twitching eye. Yes. And we got attacked. Going to need my revolver back. Kroos scoffed, but looked at him as if expecting he was joking. Then he looked at Lexi, who looked up at the griffin. It's true. We were in deep trouble. It would have been a lot better if he was armed. Can you just give him the gun back? Kroos grumbled, but hesitatedly tossed the heavy revolver to the ground in front of them, but it didn't hit the ground. Floating in Fobwatch's magic, he holstered it with a sigh, and Kroos looked to Lexi. So was this about an attack? Oh, we found your guy, hired him, and... Well, this armored pony came out and attacked us. Looked like he was going specifically for me. Lexi potted the dirt, but when she looked back up at Kroos, had a look that she didn't expect. Almost like ashamed. Aye, but you're all right. Kroos's beak clenched and he breathed it a little easier as Lexi nodded. All right, 
But from now on, stay close, okay? Can't have my record being stained by you running off and getting yourself killed. The heavy thud behind them had them all whip around with wide eyes and nearly drawn weapons. But as Oso towered over them, they slowly relaxed. Yes, we were careless. Fobwatch even told us we were being followed, and we still spread out, giving them a very clear method of attacking. Kroos looked behind Oso, then again scanned the skies. He's not... here, is he? Oso rolled his eyes. No, he's going to meet us at a predetermined location once we pass on information to Tyron. And you. He glared at Kroos. Next time, you tell us exactly what we're looking for, and you're coming with us. Hey, the smaller griffin growled. Isn't it enough we have to take him along? I mean, if there was literally any other way. Can you guys really not find it on your own? Lexi started to unplug from her armor as she spoke, but also stopped her with a firm grip. Well, I can't. And I don't know how to get you guys there alive. But I think Tyron and Yin can find it. Then why don't we go with them? Kroos's voice strained in anger. He very clearly did not want to spend time with Reaper. Because not even they can get me there alive. They, they're special. Can't really describe it. But as tough as I am, Tyron is way above me in combat. And Yin... Goodness, Yin is... He looked down at the bright, curious eyes of Lexi and shook his head as he patted her and chuckled. They're just special. We need a way for us, specifically. Yeah, well... Tros pushed himself between Fobwatch and Lexi. Let's get back to base. I'm eager to get all this crap done. Fobwatch stepped back and nodded. Indeed, the sooner this part of your mission is done, the sooner I might get a bit of reading done on a book our fine lass here might be able to provide for me. Aye, pack it up. We're heading out immediately. Also gestured to Crows, who, with some eyeing at Fobwatch, moved back to pack up camp. It was a short few minutes before they were back towards their little base where Tyron was no doubt drinking his angry self to sleep. Oso paused for a moment and looked back at Fobwatch. There was some frustration in his voice as he slowed a little to come up alongside the unicorn. Thank you for keeping her safe. I'm still not sure I can fully trust you, but I feel at least that you trust her. But if you betray that trust, I'll give you to Tyron, and he will very likely kill you very very slowly. Okay. Oso's words were calm and cold, but to Lexi's surprise, Fobwatch simply nodded. He didn't seem concerned at all. He just patiently listened, even as Oso continued. And on that subject, stay out of Tyron's way. If he asks anything, don't make eye contact. And just tell him that you're with Lexi. Apologize and get out of the way. He's not the safest to be around. Bob Watch nodded. Understood. I'll keep it to myself. The rest of the trip was relatively silent. The eventuality, as they came close to base camp, they ran into someone familiar, or rather Oso did. It took a few moments for Lexi to overcome the familiar trance before she could tell they had stopped and started talking to Yin. The perception masking magic was something she recognized so quickly, but it still felt utterly alien to her. She grumbled at the odd magical command Yin seemed to have over her own perception. She looked to Kroos, who looked drunk with the perception blocking magic, gunking up his senses and leaving him near docile and helpless. But unlike Kroos, Fobwatch looked far more aware and squinted at Yin as he was fighting against the magic. But the biggest thing on her mind was that the magic wasn't just blocking Lexi's ability to see him clearly. She also couldn't hear Yin and Oso. In fact, she was still not entirely sure it was actually Yin. 
She felt safe assuming it was, but as she couldn't actually see or properly hear him, she only guessed it was the odd wooden pony and his strange magic. She blinked and noticed that it was night. It had been a few hours away from Reaper's Bar, but was there at least another hour or so of sunlight yet? The inability to see through the magic infuriated her. What's up? Where is Tyron and Yin? Elsa shook his hide and sighed. They're already on their way. Tyron was in a very bad mood, so we decided to skip introducing him to Fabwatch or telling him about Reaper. Fabwatch raised a hoof and waited patiently. It brought about an odd silence before Oso nodded to him and he pointed at Yin with a squint. Yeah, what the hell is that? Yin chuckled finally, letting himself be heard. We have another sharp one. Don't worry, I'm just a tree. Fobwatch inched forward, still squinting, obviously focusing very hard to try and see through the perception magic. But before he got too close, suddenly the magic and Yin were gone. Fobwatch grumbled and came to the ground where Yin was and looked about, frustrated as if he expected to find the tree pony creature just hiding somewhere in plain sight. Don't bother. He's not some pony you can just find. Oso gestured up north and started walking. It didn't take long before Lexi scurried along to catch up and followed by Kroos and Fobwash. What exactly is that guy? Kroos mumbled as they continued along. Oso smiled and shrugged. Honestly, I don't even know. Lexi's mind churned. She really wondered, too. But she was pretty sure that Oso was intentionally misleading them all when it came to Yin, and possibly when it came to himself and the others. It certainly bothered her, but like with the MOM before the bombs, and like the world now, there was nothing she could do about it. So with her armor powering up her with the up the path, she cut up to Oso, and soon the patterning noise of Kroos and Fobwatch cut up as well. The trip was surprisingly silent. A few glances back at Kroos and Fobwatch made Lexi's stomach sink. She knew that Fobwatch clearly didn't like Reaper fawning over him and making advances, but she knew Kroos was very prideful, and he had an outright refused to go with them when they had gone to see Reaper the first time. It was his idea to begin with, and he was opposed to it. She grimaced, hoping that deep inside that fights wouldn't break out. She didn't want to see it, and she figured that Oso would have no patience for it. He always seemed very orderly and calm, but she had seen his reaction to violence. He was extremely efficient and not gentle. She could easily see Reaper getting conked a few times a day. She sighed. The whole ordeal was so very surreal. It hadn't been all that long since she saw the world full of ponies with deep blue skies, old and old equestria. So much had changed so very quickly, and more than just the world ending. She could feel the muscles in her legs burn, despite her armor doing most of the work. She long as never felt such strain before, and she was almost certain that if it was before the world ended, she would have given up ten times before noon today alone. She flustered. Not sure whether to be concerned about how much she had changed, even if it was for the better, or to be happy that she had survived so far. If she was being honest with herself, she was extremely surprised she was alive. But she attributed it almost entirely to her new friends. The whole thing made her stomach sink, thinking about her own death and her minuscule chance of survival without her friends. She shook her head and fussed more. You're right, love. She felt a hoof on her armored shoulder, and she flinched. Looking to Fobwatch, who smiled warmly. She couldn't help but smile, warmly right back, but flustered and nearly fell off balance when she was about to answer, only to have Crow stand up between them, glaring Fobwatch down. But Fobwatch stood back, and blinked before remarking with a soft gesture, You're hitting that? Lexi went and beat red, and Kroos sputtered, nearly grabbing his gun before Fob watched the surprise. A massive set of talons gripped over his shoulders and physically placed him on one side of Oso. I am not your mom, 
But I will separate you two if you don't play nice. Oso glared ahead and flared his wings to keep them from even looking at each other. I'm not the enemy. At least, the very least, until I can read the book at least once. I'm along for the ride, and I'll help in every way that I can. Bob Wash's tone was soft, despite having been so forcefully moved so quickly. I'm her bodyguard. I keep creeps away from her, Crow spat angrily, but instantly jumped back as a set of oversized talons reached for him, only barely missing him. Go scout ahead if you have that much energy. Oso's talons swifted to a commanding finger as he gestured ahead, but Kroos didn't get to answer before he was nearly drove under Oso at the sound of the sing-songy voice. Oh, buddy! A red form dove from above, and Oso caught Reaper with an open grasp. Why the Pegasus had chosen Trustfall from the sky so high to someone he only just met hours before was a mystery. But, as he made kissy faces at Oso, he was promptly dropped. I see that you made it. You couldn't have waited where we agreed. Oso looked down at the red form prone on the ground. I went to the meeting place, but I got bored, and there was this other things I needed to do. I had a few supplies to gather, and I really wanted to see... Oh, oh, birdie boy. Reaper's eyes shifted from Oso to Kroos, who cringed and staggered back as if the Pegasus was a hellhound that vomited acid and lava. It was you. Oh, I'm so happy. Crow slowly started to backpedal. Don't you say a damn thing. We didn't have a choice. We needed a guide. That's all we needed. Reaper smirked and fluttered back. But you remembered me. And methinks you should remember your debt. I don't know you shit, you little fruit. Crows was now backpedaling hard as Reaper pounced playfully forward in the chilly air. Oh, but you lost the brawl fair and square. You owe me a kiss. Reaper began, each playful pounce forward with a, a cat-like wiggle of his rear. It was fifty caps, not a fucking kiss. On the next pounce, Crows finally broke into a half-run, half-fly break for some cover. You said some mean things, and you never gave me the caps. So, with interest, it's now a kiss. Reaper simply gave a loose glide with occasional leaps to follow Kroos. Fuck you! Kroos started in full retreat. Oh? Well, if you insist. Reaper spoke with a loud purr as he started after the fleeing griffin. But like lightning, Oso had snatched Reaper out of the air, his talons gripping at a metal harness that seemed to be wearing along with his folded scythe. You can get that nonsense later. You're our guide. How do we get into the glowing sea during winter without dying? Reaper fussed and made his best pouting face before he answered, not objecting at Oso simply manhandling him off the ground. It's a simple cam I made. Literally just anti-freeze that's safe to drink. But it'll only protect you from the cold. It won't save you from the rates. Okay, probably one of those questions that sounds obvious, but what's a wraith? Lexi's questions seemed to break some of the tension. Also set Reaper down and introduced his talon to his snout to keep him from trying to kiss. I don't really know... I don't think anyone knows exactly. To my knowledge, they're some sort of ghouls. But they're likely caught forever between sentient and feral. They are very clearly highly intelligent and resourceful, and almost always wearing advanced pre-war gear. But they attack on sight, at least within proximity. And they are absolutely relentless. High levels of strength and speed, crazy high regeneration... And, it's just a rumor, 
but they're all supposed to be the remains of the various royal guard special forces. Reaper nodded. They are also unique to the glowing tundra. They are the last thing you want to fight. I've seen one Terraponian in half, power armor and all. And that was after I cut two of its legs off. He paused before fluttering his eyes at Fobwatch, who was uncomfortably stepped back. Mosa, however, planted a hand on his back to keep the flirtatious pony still. He grumbled and sat. We never do what I want to do. Did you bring the chems with you? Oso spoke very straightforward, and Reaper nodded. I have enough for myself and five others for a complete round trip, plus five extra days. It's some potent stuff. The only thing you need is extra water. And this stuff's kind of hard on your kidneys. Reaper smiled and hefted his a small bag full of inhalers. Oso nodded and sighed. Closing his eyes, he seemed to focus for a moment before finally opening his eyes and leveling his gaze at Reaper. Okay. How do we start? Reaper giggled and grinned near maniacally. That's the fun part. We're using that. He pointed over Oso's shoulders and everyone present turned to look. I wasn't here only because I was waiting for you. Kroos looked uneasy. Fobwash almost looked like he was rethinking following them at all. And Oso just sighed. If it works. Footnote. Level 7 achieved. Perk added. Duck and cover. You are now more well-versed in the simple act of taking cover. You gain a plus five damage threshold when you have full cover. Perk evolved. Mysterious Stranger has evolved. Every time you activate stats, Fobwatch enters with you. You may now travel with Fobwatch and Reaper. 